So this project's called the Bugginator, and it's a wooden pistol that will shoot regular table salt at like small bugs like say flies or spiders or things like that. And it's made of red oak, and then you've got these small brass plated screws that hold everything together. And there's about three music wire springs on the inside of this that I'll show in a minute. And overall size wise, it's about five and three eighths this way and about eight and three eighths this way. So it's about the same size as a standard full size pistol. It feels, physically feels about the same, you know, and, it, and of course it's lighter and there's a lot of differences too between it, but it looks very similar. Some of the differences are that you've got this little tray right here or this lid that slides out of the way and that then you've got a little tray inside here. That's where you fill in the, the table salt. Close that guy up and that holds it in there no matter what orientation the gun's in. Another difference is that the barrel, it's a, it's a square barrel. That's easier for me to make, uh, for this design at least. And, but if you think about like say uh, a rock salt shotgun, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what the shape of the barrel is. Uh, so square is just easier for you to make. Another thing different is that you've got a charging handle in the back here instead of like a caulking latch, right? So that's what you use to compress the, the main spring inside there. Uh, and I'll show more details about that in a minute. And yeah, you've got the trigger right here. It doesn't have a safety on it, by the way. You do have other details, like there's a little uh, protrusion in the back here. That's just to keep your hand uh, away from this charging handle in the back right here. And it works pretty good at keeping your, your hand away from that. So, so I'll show you some details about the inside. Okay, so what I did was I took out the screws off of one of the face plates and I've uh, started to remove that guy, that face plate out. And it just pops off and that's kind of the look of the inside right there. And you can, you can see the insides now and you've got the trigger mechanism right there. It just pivots off from a quarter inch dowel. There's a torsion spring inside there. I'll show that in a little bit more detail. This is the charging handle slash bolt right here. And then inside this guy right here is about a six inch long uh, compression coil spring. And that's the main spring that uh, will drive things. And then you've got, there, there's that lid part right there. That guy just fits into a channel on the inside of the two sides of the faceplate, right? That's just, that's how that works right there. And then you've got these just uh, spacers in here that um, give it the right width that you need. And then you've got this mechanism right here. And probably the best way to describe this guy is to show how it, how it works. And uh, I'll just slide this uh, charging handle back. I'm going to try to hold everything in place and make, make it in camera view. So just bear with me about this. Okay, there we go. So I've got the charging handle pulled back. The, the trigger mechanism engages into the bolt right here. And there's, uh, you, you know, there's just an interlocking mechanism there with uh, positive latching right there. So it kind of holds itself in place. And then this guy here, which actually was the trickiest part of the project, surprisingly, is a little spring-loaded lever right there. And what that all that does is that when you get the the barrel loaded with the table saw, this little guy right here, as you as you, you slide back the charging handle, this guy's going to uh, spring down, right, and it's going to hold the table saw in this area right here, or whatever it is you're trying to shoot. And so that's the only purpose of that. When you, when you hit the trigger, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you this um, in kind of slow motion here, is when you hit the trigger, the charging handle and the bolt are going to spring forward, and then that part right there slides out of the way, and it, it'll come forward, right? And the reason why I put this at a real long, uh, kind of uh, at an angle like this instead of straight down is that when this bolt hits that part, it's already traveling really fast, right? So I wanna be able to move that thing out of the way really quickly, right? And so I don't wanna 
have that bolt hitting this flap at a 90 degree angle. I want it to hit it, you know, 45 or even more than 45 degree angle. So it moves out of the way really quickly. And it's just a really weak uh, torsion spring right there. And by the way, I made all of these springs myself with a, a spring making jig. That you, that's another video on my channel you can check out if you if you ever have a need to make uh, springs like this uh, yourself. Sometimes it's hard to find just the right spring. This right here is just a a, a piece of uh, fifty one thousandths uh, music wire, and that's why it uses the hinge right there. So really, all these parts are I made myself, uh, and so that helps out when you when putting this all together. So. I'll, I'll release that, that, uh, that charging handle again, and I'll take this um, trigger mechanism out of here and show you what that looks like. That's, that's the little uh, dowel, quarter inch dowel, and that guy slides out of the way. And then there's another torsion spring inside there, inside this trigger mechanism right there. And that's what gives you uh, the twist action, right, that, well, always want to tend to force that, that trigger up into engaging the bolt. And this guy is one I made myself again, you know, so it's another example of how you can make your own custom springs for projects. And then um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove these other two parts right here, which are needed to get this uh, charging handle out, and I'll show you what that looks like next. Okay, so I've got the brass screws on the back side of this, this guy unscrewed now, so these guys are loose. And these pieces are really just, uh, they're spacers and they're also form part of the barrel for this as well. So these are removable parts. These are the guys that have the sights on it. There's the front sight, the rear sight, and those are just like a, you know, a regular sight you know, that you can use to aim the pistol. Uh, so they actually seem to uh, look pretty good. I, I mean, it is kind of a shotgun pistol, so uh, as far as accuracy, I don't, I don't think there's going to be very good accuracy, but they, 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 they seem to function all right. So those guys get removed, and then this charging handle uh, bolt gets removed, and that's what's got this main spring in here. And this guy here, I also made myself with this um, spring making jig, and it is about uh, six inches long. And it's got 40 coils, and I, I designed it this way by intent. You know, and it, it's about three quarter inch outer diameter and 51 thousandths uh, uh, wire diameter, and so yeah, I, I pretty much designed this guy by intent to, to physically fit in here and have the right, you know, uh, uh, minimum compression uh, dis distance and. Uh, so and that part of it uh, turned out pretty good. It actually works just as I, I intended in terms of the physical fit uh, Another detail here is you've got this uh, the center spacer part right here And that's got a, a backstop right here, and that's the backstop for the spring, right? That's when you when you slide this charging handle back This is what's that stops the, the spring on that side and the charging handle will compress, whoops, will compress this way like this so that's a fixed part right there, and so yeah, that's that's how this thing goes together. It's a I, I tried to make it as simple as possible, uh, but yet be usable, and I, I I think I accomplished that. Although I will say that this is my first attempt at making something like this. You know, and I, I really got a, 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 a more of an appreciation of uh, the engineering involved in making an actual gun. Even with something as simple as as this is, you know, and, and knowing, uh, you know, some of the improvements, you know, that I could make to this, you know, uh, uh, one of the big ones, the big improvements is uh, the spring force. Uh, I'd like to see, maybe when I do this again, I'm going to try and design it with a more powerful spring, and then also, really importantly. Uh, this this charging handle design is, is kind of a little bit of a, a design flaw in the sense that it's it's pretty heavy I mean this is wood so it's going to be pretty light but you can look at it and it's a big part big piece you know and the the weight of this 
whatever you're attaching to the end of this compression spring is going to have a real strong influence on the, the final velocity of the bolt. Right? So ideally, I would have had just a small bolt like this, and that's the part that you know gets uh, gets uh, you know sprung out. You know when you press the trigger, right? Where this is this charging handle is more of kind of a fixed thing that it doesn't move. The way I got it designed right now, just for simplicity, is that the whole thing moves, right? And that adds a whole lot of weight to the end of this guy. So that really affects the the, the performance of this guy. I think that on the next version of this that I do, I can significantly improve that and uh, make it better from that standpoint. There's a lot of other little things that, you know, that I could, I could do as well. Putting the safety on here is, is another one. Uh, tuning the shape of this guy, you know, to be a little bit more ergonomic, although it feels fine, you know, but I think it, it just could be improved quite a bit. Some other things are that you can see there's a whole lot of screws here, right? And I think that's a real big one in terms of disassembly. I mean, that's an awful lot of screws to have to deal with. And that's really not even all the screws. There's some of them I left in to uh, keep, you know, this, this inside spacer piece attached, right? There's four more there that, that are, are included there. So quite a bit of little improvements that can be made to this guy, but I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and I think it looks pretty good. It's all made by hand. There's no uh, CNC uh, manufacturer of any of these parts. Another detail is how the table salt gets loaded into the barrel. You've got this little shelf right there, or ledge right here. The table salt is fitting in this area right here. And what, what happens is that you'll pull back on the charging handle backwards and it will go to about here, leaving a little bit of an air gap right there for the table salt to be gravity fit into the barrel. And so you'll go beyond this point right here where it is right now where the trigger is latched. I'll try to show that. It takes quite a bit of force to do it, but hope, but hope I can do this. Okay, there we go. So you got it pulled back and there's a little bit of air gap right there and then you, you let back off, let off on the charging handle and then the trigger is engaged and now you've got a small amount of table salt loaded in the barrel. How long you leave that, leave it open, you know, you can, you can control how much you, table salt you load into the chamber by how long you leave that, that open. And then also, um, the design can be modified such that this charging handle can be pulled back even farther, like say maybe even to here, and then you could probably load this with other things, like say, uh, even load it with BBs or you know bigger rock salt. Um, so it's got that flexibility that you you don't have to just be limited to shoot uh, table salt. Okay, so I got this thing set up in kind of a blunderbust configuration. I loaded a bunch of uh, small metal nuts inside there instead of table salt, and I'm gonna try and see what it does. Uh, it's about. Uh, I want to say probably about eight feet distance to that metal uh, aluminum can right there. We'll see what this does.